Hey folks, it's Van Kraken here. Welcome to a World of Warships PC stream this Sunday night. I am normally streaming World of Warships Legends, but I've also been a World of Warships PC player for four years coming up this Thanksgiving, so just a couple weeks away. And tonight, my goal for you was to just step back and start at the very beginning. So what's it like for a new player in World of Warships to set up their brand new account? Um, my account isn't completely new. I played a little over 100 games in it. But my goal tonight is to show you a very early stage account and kind of walk you through some various things you can do. Kind of five key high level tips to helping to build up your brand new World of Warships account and to basically have some backstory on some of the things I wish I knew when I was starting out in the game. There's a lot of complaints when you read the forums or the Discord that there's not a ton of information for new players that really helps people get started in the right way. There are some tutorial videos and there's a lot of information we'll talk about as we go along tonight. I'm kind of, no pun intended, stream of consciousness. It's not a rote presentation, so to speak, but there are some key topics we'll cover and there are a lot of sources of information you can learn on this game, which is one thing that makes it so great. The longer you play, the more you learn, the more educated you become, and the better you can get at this game. It's kind of a low skill floor. Everyone can jump in and play, but to play it really well takes time and takes practice, and there's a ton of knowledge you can use uh, to make yourself a better player in this game. Um, we're just gonna jump in, we're in port. I like the beautiful Fjords port. Um, my background is Norwegian, but I am American, so I go by the moniker Van Kraken, which is kind of a mashed up name that I came up with, but it's water kraken essentially, is what it means if you take the Norse uh, term for water, which is Van and Kraken, which everyone loves getting Krakens in this game, which is a five kill game. Kind of a cool accomplishment that you can get and usually a good rush of adrenaline with that. So we're just going to load into battle before we go into these five specific things. Um, and just get into a battle first with a battleship. And we're going to try to play four or five games tonight, maybe six. Um, showcase some different ship types. And um, I think one of the key things you can think about is playing some different types of ships, seeing what strikes your play style or, or your kind of appetite, so to speak. Everyone will say, well, what's the best ship out there? You like this specific ship and one neat thing about this game is it's really dependent on the player whether a ship jibes with you or not so we're going to start out again with wyoming battleships are slow especially at the lower tiers they get faster as you get higher tier in the game there are 10 tiers so uh, tier one is cruisers only tier two introduces destroyers and more advanced cruisers, and then tier three introduces the first battleships. Wyoming is a tier four, so she's a little more progressed than the South Carolina, which is the entry level US battleship. So what you'll see is a very slow pace that she can make way at. Um, battleships tend to have a pretty good armament. So they have main battery, which is their big cannons. And they have a secondary battery, which is the smaller deck guns, which can be used to basically protect the ship at close range. Um, we're in queue for battle, and what you're gonna see when we play lower tiers, now up to about tier four, is that there's gonna be bots that fill out the population of the game. Um, it didn't used to be that way. You used to have to sit in the queue for a long, long time, interminable amount of time. You can see right now there's only three live players in queue. Um, Used to be you had to wait a long time to get a full match of real players if you're playing in what's called a random battle mode, which is what we're trying to enter into. Um, the other type of battle is an AI battle or basically a battle against bots. Um, it was called co-op on the PC side. It's called AI mode on Legends is the console version. And that's just against basically computer CPU controlled ships. Um, random battles didn't used to be that way, but what you're going to find tonight is that the random battles do have a lot of um, CPU-controlled ships in them now to round out the rosters and get you loaded into a game faster so you're not just sitting in queue for a long, long period of time. But it looks like we're going to be waiting long enough as it is right now to get our first game. So I'll talk a little bit about the first couple points um, that I wanna make to you tonight when you're setting up your new account. The first is don't rush up the tiers. So 
I'm at about 113 battles on this account and I am not going straight up the tiers as fast as I can in one ship line only. I have the advantage of kind of knowing some of the lines I like to play. When you're a brand new player, you're completely feeling out what line and what nation is going to appeal to you. So a line is typically a ship type. People get in arguments about whether it's a class or a type. I prefer to say type, which is battleship, cruiser, destroyer or aircraft carrier which also goes by cv or carrier vehicle we finally loaded in what we're going to see is we are the only human on our side and we're actually going to be playing against all bots on the other side so as we go through the night tonight we'll play some battles in a couple higher tier ships as well towards the end to see what battle against live players is like but actually you will appreciate in the start of your journey that you're playing against mostly computer controlled players because once you play against humans, they're a lot more wily, a lot less predictable and more difficult to defeat. So, but here we're in our ship type of a battleship, also goes by the designation BB. Um, I'm not sure what BB stands for, honestly, battleship something. But the shorthand is BB, capital BB, when you're on the forums in chat. Cruiser is going to go by CA or CL for Cruiser Heavy or Cruiser Light. Why it's CA for Cruiser Heavy? I don't know. <laughs> and then Destroyers are DDs, two capital Bs, and again, aircraft carriers are abbreviated as CV or So in a battleship, in an AI mode game, we are just going to sail straight towards the caps. Now in this game, we basically have three caps in a line. Sometimes there's four in a diamond shape. This is called domination mode, where basically the teams that can get into these caps and take control of them, accumulate points. A team that gets to a thousand points first wins, or a team that has the highest point total when the timer expires after 20 minutes wins, or third win condition is killing all the enemy ships outright. It's obviously the fastest and cleanest way to do it in AI mode. But as you'll see with lower tier ships, tier four and below, it can take a while to kill all the ships off. Um, again, the AI programming is kind of funny these days. All the ships used to go just ram one another. That doesn't so much happen anymore. Um, but the ships will pull right up next to one another, have these prolonged battles where they're not really doing a whole lot of damage to one another. I'm taking a long time kill one another off. I guess that's the improved programming mode. Tier 4, you are going to see destroyers straight off. You're not going to see destroyers in a tier 1 battle. You're not going to see battleships in a tier 1 battle either. In a battleship, I try to get to a spot where I can try to catch the other ships that I'm shooting at broadside, basically when they're showing me the long side of their ship. And the main reason you want to shoot at the long side of an enemy ship is that's where the armor is weakest, typically is strongest in the bow. Secondarily, the stern, the reinforcing points for the hull, and then the weakest is typically the side armor, or transverse armor. Right now, we're not going to do as much damage firing straight on at these ships. And secondly, there's going to be a lot less target to hit because we're looking at a skinny angle of the ship versus a longer, more accessible side. Which is easier to hit at these lower tiers when the ships are extremely inaccurate. And I kind of call battleships coffee ships. They take 30 seconds. Between 20 and actually 40 seconds to reload, so you can take a shot, set your steering angle. I don't want to hit the island here, so I'm going to steer to avoid the island, but basically shoot my main batteries off, aim in a good direction, steer in a good direction, and then have a sip of coffee. <laughs> I will be doing tonight. Okay. We're going to start getting fire on some enemy battleships here. And destroyers and cruisers. And here's what we mean by having a broadside target. So I'm going to steer kind of directly at this Karlsruhe. Try to catch him broadside. He has a much higher damage potential. Target penetrated. 
shooting at the front of the ship in general. In World of Warships PC, you have to be very careful about shooting your main battery guns or shooting torpedoes at neighboring friendly ships. You can't kill your own teammates. No. Enemy cruiser destroyed. By hitting them with friendly fire. That doesn't happen on World of Warships Legends on console. There's no friendly fire. You can spew out a bazillion torpedoes. We've got some torpedoes launched just by the cruiser there. Cruisers in general have torpedoes. Not all the US cruisers are an exception. Um, a few battleships, mainly German battleships, a couple Japanese have torpedoes. Torpedoes are mainly the domain of cruisers and destroyers. I'm not going to get as much damage shooting front on at a battleship, so I'm going to try to steer over here to the side so I can get a shot at the side of his ship. I want to be broadside to him. And. Because he's aiming at this cruiser over here, I don't have to worry about angling my armor yet. We'll talk about that a little bit as we go along. If you've been a world of tanks players, which is where I came from originally. Enemy armor angling destroyed. is a key concept that you'll bring with you from world of tanks. Angled armor surfaces are harder to penetrate and more likely to generate a bounce of a shell. Whereas a flat-sided target where a shell hits you at a 90 degree angle has a much higher chance of penetrating damage. As you saw on that last ship, I got two ribbons that look like the side of a ship with a little bar across the top. That is a citadel hit. If we can get one here on that Russian battleship, which I don't think I can pronounce its name properly. These are citadel hits. Citadel hits are the gold of this game. There's no gold ammo, but there is gold hits. And those Citadel hits basically penetrate into the internal works of the ship that are the vital compartments. So what would those compartments be? Well, in real life, they would be the power plant, generally where the boilers are. These have been steam-driven boilers. And the other key compartment is the magazines, the gun magazines. So if you want to do especially large sums of damage, you go for citadel hits. It's going to be difficult to get in destroyers. You can, in certain instances, get citadel hits on thin-skinned ships like cruisers. Destroyers don't have a citadel. It's hard for a destroyer to citadel a battleship. But cruisers can, in some instances, and battleships definitely are the, the ships that have the best time citadeling ships of all types, cruisers, carriers, which have citadels, and enemy battleships. When we talk about armor angling, we'll also talk a little bit about uh, ammunition types, of which there's high explosive, semi-armor piercing, and armor piercing. This isn't going to be so much a technical video on shooting and the mechanics of the game. You can get those tips from WG. We might cover some of those topics in, in future sessions. Tonight we're talking more about the high level stuff. There's a wealth of information on armor mechanics and ammunition type mechanics and the strategy of play when it comes down to executing tactics and how to put those mechanics basically to work for you to the best of your ability. All right. Only one battleship left. We're up to 400 points. The reason we're not higher is our bots have not capped a lot of the bases. So we have possession of the C cap, earned our color. And when you watch my stream, it's not going to be the normal colors you're going to see that other streamers use because I run in colorblind mode. 
I have a really hard time seeing the base red and green difference. Found that the hard, out the hard way in World of Tanks before they had colorblind mode. I used to do a decent amount of team damage because I'd get excited and like, I can't tell is it my teammate or not. Um, so when colorblind mode came out, I was ecstatic. World of Tanks, that carried over to World of Warships. So my colors are going to be a little wacky compared to the other streamers that you see. So just unique. But the sea cap has turned in our favor. Same color as our banners on our ships that show our hit point totals underneath our player name, the ship type, uh, the ship name, battleship icon here, the two stripes. But we have not basically got into B to turn it to our possession or A. They possess A, so the counter has been going relatively slowly. I'm going to get in and start capping B. And this Wyoming is going to sail broadside in front of me. So I have seven Citadel hits already, which is a lot for a lower tier game for me in a really slow battleship. But we're only one ship away from winning the game. Not a lot of risk we're going to lose this game. Actually, one, one kill away from a Kraken. Battleships to me, coffee ships. When you get in the higher tiers, it's a lot, a lot more work. You've got a lot more players that you have to mind. With these low tier battles, some people love playing low tier. Don't get me wrong. The game goes a little slow. Hey, make seven. Thanks for following, dude. Appreciate it. Drop a note in chat. Tell me if you're new to the game. We're just basically tonight going over our basically new account mechanics. Um, some of the basics of the game from a nuts and bolts perspective and in game play. Play some game examples, but it's going to talk about you know, some key things that I focus on with regard to building my accounts. Oh, you're an alpha tester, dude. Well, this is so remedial. But hey, I've uh, I missed Alpha on PC. I did make Alpha in Legends. So my early goal here as a new streamer is really just to help other people pick up the game. And I really enjoy the game a lot. And have met some great folks playing it. And I think the whole Twitch evolution has really made this game even more popular. And as you can see, I'm not a young dude. And it's neat that there's so many older gamers that play this game, played World of Tanks, because I think we got brought in under the banner of the history of it, um, not just the gameplay. I've been gaming since Commodore 64, had one of those with a floppy drive <laughs> in my bedroom when I was a young guy. Um, I have a lot better PC now than that. But anyway, um, tonight is really just about, again, the, the base things you can do to build up accounts. Um, help get you into this game quickly and into the flow and really enjoy the game and hopefully stick with it. It can be super frustrating to be in a team game base game like this, where you have really crappy teams all the time and you can't get a win and your teams aren't doing well. So if you can focus on your own individual performance and getting better at that, then I think it alleviates the whole part of the team aspect that can be great on one day you can go 10 and 0 and on another day you can be Two and eight, God forbid, zero and ten. It doesn't happen very often, but win rate is a difficult thing when you first start playing because you can't carry a 15 player game all by yourself. All right, so we got four kills. We were top of the table, which should be a really easy thing to do in a game versus bots. <laughs> so, what I was basically trying to talk about while we were loading in was my first point, and I'll, I'll jump to this really quickly, do a quick highlight slide. I'm First point's gonna be don't rush up the tiers. If you've got a new account and you're building a new account, we hear it all the time in the in the Twitch channels that I inhabit and comment with in the communities that I'm a part of. And that's so many new players seeing Twitch streamers or going to YouTube videos and seeing people playing tier tens and going, I just want a tier 10 ship. 
I want the Yamato. That's the coolest thing. The gun sounds are the coolest freaking thing, believe me. But getting to tier 10 too quickly is just going to make you really frustrated and not only make you frustrated, but make your teammates extremely frustrated if you're fl playing in random battles with live players. If you're playing in AI mode and co-op, you're going to lose a lot of credits at tier 10. <laughs> so I don't necessarily recommend it, but that's a way to play with not worrying about the salt that's going to come down on you from players who are pissed off that you're a new player playing at tier 8, tier 9, tier 10 too soon. So the first key thing is really just don't rush up the tiers. Consider building your skills across multiple nations. So when we look at the tech tree, we have all these different nations, which, um, as Make7 can say, did not exist when we first started playing. It was just the IJN, the Imperial Japanese Navy, and the USN, US Navy. That was your whole set of choices. And then I remember it was a big to-do when the Germans came out and the other lines. There was the Bliskowitska, which is still around, one Polish destroyer. Um, it was new and, and exciting and fun to see the new lines come in, just like it has been in World of Tanks, if you play that game. But basically, there's different play styles across the different nations. So you're gonna start out in cruisers. I actually played the US cruiser line thought, well, I'm just going to jam up this line all the way as quick as I can to the top of the line, which at the time was Des Moines. The heavy cruiser line didn't exist. It was one singular branch. I got to about Omaha, and I just started experiencing a complete world of pain. I was getting killed left and right. I didn't know how to watch my situational awareness on the mini-map. And I got slaughtered so often, so quickly, it just became really frustrating. And I felt bad about how poorly I was doing with regard to my teams. My win rate was only probably 45%. Um, as a tanks player, I was well over 50%. So it was very frustrating. So what I did actually at that point was jump in and start running some battleships. So again, across nations, one cruiser line is going to be different than another. They're going to play differently. But then you also have ship type. So the battleships, again, like you just saw, play a lot slower. They give you a lot more time to think through your moves. Um, you don't have to fire and aim as often. So it's just a slower paced game. You can pay more attention to where you're positioning, pay attention to the mini map um, a lot easier and build situational awareness without being in a ship that's food for battleships and gonna get focus fired by five or six guys right at the start of the game because you sail too far into the middle of the map. So anyway, that's that's point number one tonight is don't rush up the tiers. Consider building your skills across multiple ship lines. I just realized I'm on my slide and not showing you guys the lines. But again, this is the line that I started out on was the US um, cruiser line and really hit the pain point here at Omaha. Um, then I jumped over to the battleship line. Things slowed down. I was able to get my footing under me and really start contributing more and enjoying the game. I'm doing some battleship play. And then I branched out and, and did the, the Japanese side. I um, really like the Japanese cruisers and actually wound up grinding the Japanese battleship line along with the US battleship line. They have different qualities. Um, US battleships are extremely slow. The Japanese are faster but their armor isn't as good. So just different dynamics, just like there's different tank lines and tanks, there's a lot of different dynamics to the different ship lines in World of Warships. So that's the first point. Don't rush up the tiers. All right, we played a battleship game. Um, we are going to now give an example of a cruiser game. So let's go a little higher um, in tier. It's, it's playing against bots is is not as fun for sure let's see if we can get some live players at tier five in konigsberg so my second point is going to be about commander so you have all these commander skills that you can pick for your different captains or commanders on your boats and um, there's different sources which i mentioned at the outset the world of warships wiki page is a great place to look at different commander builds suggestions of what skills to take at each of these skill tree um, tiers. Um, the good news is there's lots of options. The bad news is it's going to change soon in one of the upcoming updates. The, the, the 19 tier um, captain, 19 point captain, I believe is going to become a 21 point captain. So 
What I say tonight will have some flux to it. It's going to evolve as it did not long after I started playing the game. The whole skill tree got revised. But one key tip I'm gonna give you for starting with your new account is move your commanders up. So as you level up a ship, we'll go back to the tech tree and look at the German line that I've progressed the most in so far, which is the German cruisers, which I really like this line. I have two World of Warships North America accounts. This is my new EU account. So it's one of my favorite lines. So I picked this to get my highest tier of progress so far, which is to the York. Um, as I've moved up each ship, I've moved my commander up to the highest ship in the line. So right now, I do have an 11 point commander, but he's sitting in the York. Um, he's not fully trained out for the York, so his skills are kind of at a diminished state, but it's just a key thing that you have to have one ship to a one commander ratio in World of Warships PC. So each time you graduate a ship, move your commander up with it. Um, I'm gonna give an example in Konigsberg, which is a little lower tier, but again, hopefully against some live players. Um, we're gonna jump into battle with her. Just to give you a sense of now, what is the speed difference with a cruiser at the same rough tier as what we just played in the, the Wyoming? What would it look like if it were a cruiser game? You're gonna see that the pace of play is very different. You see if I talk a bit too much, which I generally do anyways, I'm gonna lose focus and probably get some pretty serious broadside um, armor piercing damage from a battleship that finds interest in me. Um, one thing to consider right now is it's kind of the middle of the night on the, the European server. So we might actually get some bots in this game, even at tier five, because we're, we're in the middle of the night there. As we jump to the higher tiers, a lot more likely that we'll play against uh, all human players. Uh-oh, taking the server down for maintenance. Got pulled from the queue. All right, I think that server may have gone down, guys. Exit out, see if we can reload. There was a little message about server maintenance earlier. Had to load back in. So anyway, while we load in, again, just talking about commander skills. It's a lot easier on the new Legends game on the console side because you can use one commander across multiple ships. So that's a really neat feature of the console game that makes it, I think, a lot more accessible for new players, not as frustrating. There's not as much grindiness to it because you can level up your commander playing that commander in the entire US cruiser line, for instance, if you want. And which is how I have my US cruiser line commander set up on that, that game. But in World of Warships PC, it's going to be one commander per ship. So it's going to take you a lot longer to build up those commander skills up to 19 points or the new level soon to be 21 points, I believe. All right, we'll try logging back into EU. Looks like we're back in port. So maybe it's just being servers just being fussy right now. Try to load back in. You can already see at this tier, we have a lot more human players in queue. This year, number of CVs, battleships, cruisers, and destroyers um, within your tier range. So you can get a mixed game, which is mixed between humans and bots. That kind of basically creates a new element of strategy where you can try to kill the humans first, <laughs> look for the ships with the human gamer tags. Um, the PC ships, the, the CPU controlled ships all have a colon and then the name and a colon after it. And they're all named after kind of famous ship commanders from different nations. So if you go for the, the players with names like mine, Van Kraken, you are going after the live humans. And I typically tend to snipe those people first, get them out of the game and then clean up the bots afterwards. So 
So one consideration on commanders is if you keep your old ships in the line, like in some lines you might like the lower tier ships and say, hey, I want to keep those ships around in my port. Um, you can backfill those ships with a new commander as you move your commander up to the top tier ship. But again, you'll have to grind out all of their skills again. Um, we'll talk about ways to level up those commanders quicker and also to level up your XP process quicker in your ships. Um, mainly the, the thing you want to do if you don't race up the tiers is just try to get your ships upgraded, which is get them out of a stock state. And, and we'll look at the, the modules page after we finish this battle and show you how you get your, your ship kitted out with more capability. You can see here, we have a mix of humans and bots. This is a really interesting game. It's about 60-40 uh, humans to bots. This Konigsberg has a really crappy commander. I'll warn you that right now. I don't have a lot of skills built up on this commander. Three point commander, whereas on my US accounts, my uh, North America accounts, I have 19 point commanders on quite a few of my ships. General quarters. All right. The key thing in a cruiser versus a battleship, you don't want to get too far too fast. In a battleship, you're pretty slow, especially in a Wyoming. So I'm not going to be able to be the first ship out ahead of the pack, typically, because you just inherently move too slow. In a cruiser, if you accelerate to full speed and you head into the middle of the map, you will get spotted before any of your destroyer friends get spotted and you will get focus fired. Basically means multiple people off the enemy team all firing at you at one time, which is actually what you want to do to the enemy team. So you can use your um, commands or the text chat to try to help your teammates pick ships to focus fire on. It's uh, the F3 command on your keyboard. And I use that one pretty often, more than any other command in the game. Because I do just want my, my teammates to be focused firing on the same ship, if at all possible. But team game, there's a lot of people who don't like to be told what to do in this game and won't listen to you. So don't be frustrated or surprised when people say uh, some choice words sometimes if you ask them what to do, even if it's polite. I have a 16.5 kilometer main battery range. It's how far my main battery guns can fire. In a cruiser, generally your ammo type that you're gonna fire most regularly is high explosive. Whereas in a battleship, it's generally going to be armor piercing rounds. So we see a Usano, it's a lower tier Italian cruiser that we're going to fire at first, and you can see behind that, the French cruiser, the Duguay, is already firing at us, so we don't want to sit still in open water in a cruiser. I see a lot of new players sitting still out in the open, and it's a quick recipe for death to back to port. <laughs> I will keep on the move. I've actually switched to armor-piercing rounds, because this lower tier cruiser is giving me broadside. So I'm going to use broadside to my advantage to use armor piercing ammunition. At a bigger distance, I'm going to use high explosive, or if they're bow on to me, I'm going to use high explosive. We'll talk about the difference between those rounds in a minute here. This battleship is bow into me. I don't have a very good chance of penetrating his bow armor. But what I do have is the ability to not only cause blast damage from a high explosive round, landing up on the upper part or superstructure of the ship. You can see I just got an icon where I set that ship on fire. That's basically the second type of damage a cruiser can inflict with a regular basis is fire damage. Call it stacking fires. Get multiple fires burning on one enemy ship. Battleships usually the best enemy ship to do that against. See now versus the play with the battleship. I am way more maneuverable. I'm constantly moving 
changing my heading, oftentimes changing my speed. We'll have some fun sound effects to celebrate setting things on fire. Same with our Halloween weekend theme of beasts. It's working out that it's mainly bot ships around me, so I'm not shooting at humans right now. I'm shooting at bots. There isn't human there in a Koenig, but he's behind that island. Not gonna go into a ton of mechanics on the aiming, stuff like that. That's basically the the realm of folks like Notzer, I Chase, the folks who have a wealth of really awesome YouTube videos. Search World of Warships aiming. I'll describe the different sites to you, how to use them. Maybe someday I'll try to explain those in layman's terms and get a little technical with the more advanced players. Bot ship is heading away, and I've got a human ship running parallel to me, so I'm gonna try to start working down human a little bit. I can set one battleship on fire, I'll actually switch to a second one and see if I can set it on fire. I'm rinse and repeat. Not getting lucky with fire damage right now. Augie hit me. The ship is on fire! Problem solved, sir. Master. Got a fire. Yagi has really terrible um, accuracy, so I'm surprised he hit me twice in a row. Is a human. Hit me from 11 kilometers. Oftentimes they miss. DD on that side. There he is. He's, okay, he's trying to torp from the doggy now. We're about half health. A little more than half health, so I'm going to have to be more careful and attentive to being aimed at. Let's see if we can get a little payback on the doggy. I have to lead the Miyagi out more than the German ships because he's faster. I don't know if my captain skill is active. How many ships are aiming at me right now? Oh, nice shot. Well done, Commander. Give some props where props are due. Just start to get a feel when you play cruisers for a long time of when people are targeting you. And there is a tool that tells you how many ships are targeting you at any given time. It'll show next to your detected symbol. I don't think that's active on the ship because it's a new commander. That generally tells me when I have to steer away. This is more, uh, oh no, I do have it. It just lit up, okay. So one, one enemy ship is targeting me right now. Basically tells me when I need to throw my ship into a hard turn. I don't know if it was the Kaiser or the Congo. I got Congo once. Try the Kaiser once. Our sonar or hydroacoustic. Trying to launch torpedoes on this other side. Is can we stop in time? Is the question. Oh, we're gonna have to accelerate. A little more dangerously than we want to. Battle is pretty even. Anyways. Switch ammo types to armor piercing to go against this Omaha. 
He has very thin sides. He's shooting a high explosive at me, so I'll have a damage advantage on him. Do I think? Enemy cruiser foundered. Got the Omaha. So I have a mod that's counting down seconds next to my detected, my yellow gold detected icon. That's telling me is how long it takes my detection range to go from my maximum um, main battery firing range back down to my base detection. That's basically called gun bloom, that you're more detectable when your guns fire, which kind of makes sense, right? So one thing you need to learn in cruisers is to take a rest <laughs> and what you call go dark. Got off screen, guys. My bad. I hit a hit a button back there. Sorry, I've been off off the main game screen. Rookie maneuver. In a cruiser, you basically often just want to go dark. Right now we have multiple adversaries targeting us, so can we basically lose detection, get in a little safer spot? So I know how long I was on the be right back screen, you guys. <laughs> piercing rounds. Try to catch that Italian cruiser coming around the corner. Fighter airborne. Too many toys and learning to figure them all out. Probably gonna appear right about here. Person would being spotted by that DD. We are low health, so we're a popular target right now. Action, unfortunately. Fired out by the New York again. We're kind of in a crossfire. Watching one set of rounds and then the other, actually adjusting my steering. Fighter returning to ship. We could just get far enough away. There, we lost contact. Where? Oi. That cruiser hid and come around the corner. We're gonna try to get some cover between behind one of these islands. by the destroyer again. Not leaving me alone, obviously. Enemy destroyer detected. That's the little bugger who's spotting me. No one currently aiming at us, so get our main battery back in action. Try to find some cover on this island. We're not spotted anymore. Let's see if we can do working on this New York. There we go. Our goal is to get him on fire. And then see what he does. If he puts the fire out, we would love to set another one. I see. Thank you. Goal in this game is try to take destroyers out as quickly as possible if we can.
I'll always prioritize the destroyer target. Bet he blinked out at him for a second. Right now, we're not spotted in this position that we're in. Got another fire. Got to launch my catapult fighter to improve my spotting. And the Italian cruiser used its smoke, so. Cruisers and destroyers have a smoke screen capability. Even think the Italian battleships potentially are going to have that. Now we want to kill this destroyer badly. Battle ends in five minutes. Dude, Emerald. Seriously? Thought somebody was in zoomed in mode, not looking where he was driving. Very well getting killed. That can go to do some spotting for us. Whole video is just on the spotting mechanics in this game, just like there is in World of Tanks. Good old disappearing ship syndrome. It makes a lot of people upset when they first start playing the game. have torpedoes in this boat. Like the destroyer's not going to come through that gap, but just to be sure, we're going to deny that gap. Okay. Lose connection with the server again? No, we just lost the game. So that game went pretty close to the full run of 20 minutes. We wound up finishing first, but we we didn't win. I lost so many hit points early that I could not rush in 1v3 on those ships and expect to survive, or else I would have tried to get into those caps sooner. I just needed to hope that that Gangoot, that battleship, would have lived a little bit longer and could have tanked some damage while we worked down those cruisers. Um, but it's a very good and respectable damage total. We got uh, a kill, we got some good fires and citadels, which can help with, with missions, which we'll talk about in a second. So overall, not a bad result. In a new account without premium, which I don't run premium time on this European account, my biggest uh, sticking point currently is credits. So grinding as many credits as possible will help me buy new ships in the line, help me buy upgrades or modules on the ships that you're trying to progress to um, fully fledged level versus stock. That game did not do too badly with regard to giving us some decent credit earnings. Okay, so third point we were going to talk about is how do you get our ships and commanders leveled up as quickly as possible? So look back at our chart really quickly there's flags and camos so flags are um, what hang basically here i don't have a lot mounted on the ship if any currently because i moved up to the next ship in the line and i think i took my flags off um the flags give you an economic boost like more credits more xp they might improve the performance or damage capability or fire setting capability of your ship um so flags are one way to basically accelerate your progress and give you more earnings. Um, 
Again, help you unlock ship modules, help you complete campaigns and missions that will give you more flags and more bonuses. Um, and then camouflages can do that same thing. So where do we find those? Um, our modules or upgrades to the ship live under equipment. Um, exterior is where we'll find camouflage and signals. So right now I'm only running two signals on this ship. One is to increase her fire chance, um, chance of causing fires with her high explosive ammunition. And the second is an economic signal. I got to get back into the port view, guys. Sorry. Um, one is a fire setting flag and the other is basically commander XP. So we want to level up this new captain as quickly as we can. I could have also had a credit flag or XP flag on her as well to try to help boost those levels for us. The camouflage is what the ship looks like on the outside. If you see a ship completely devoid of camouflage, a lot of time it's a brand new player. Um, you want to use a camo when you have it, um, but you want to use it smartly. A lot of people don't use camos of high value in co-op battles because they just don't yield you a lot of credits or XP. Um, standard or random battles give you a lot more XP and credits. So that's the best place to use your special camos. And you will get these special camos through missions sometimes, or campaigns, or containers. So look in port, see if we got a container for that win. Um, if you get something called a super container, which I've gotten a couple on this account already, you can win special camouflages, like the incredible ugly ocean soul camo, that give you a boost, not just to detectability, it makes you harder to see, makes enemies harder for it to hit you. That's the increasing their dispersion, but it gives you a boost in credits and a boost in XP per battle. So when I'm leveling up new ships that I just acquire, I want to use these special camos on those ships until I get them upgraded. And then I'll just basically progress at the normal um, XP gain rate um, without expending my fancy camos. I'll use those for brand new ships that I'm uh, leveling up. Hey, Wipe, thanks for the host, man. I'm doing a PC tonight, helping people with new accounts. Um, hey, no, no problem. I'll look to catch you later this week, or the coming week. I guess it's almost next week. I hope you have a good week at school, and, and thanks for the, the host, my friend. Appreciate it. So we did get a container. So... Basically, oh, we have four containers to open, so we've made some mission stuff going on. Okay, hey, cool. Well, I will look for you tomorrow if I'm on. Um, I have to do some work tomorrow, but I'll be off and on, so definitely check that out if you are streaming, my friend. Yeah, it'd be fun. Talk to you soon. Have a great night. Thank you for stopping by. So we actually have four containers that we wound up getting, and you can pick credits, Camos and signals, more resources, which are special currency types to buy different types of ships and commanders and other perks that we won't talk about tonight. That gets a little more into a port overview. Right now, I'm just going to pick more credits um, for this container we just earned. Take it easy, wiped. And we'll open this guy and see what we get. Each container is kind of randomized get three basically rewards in it and sometimes we got a sloth sometimes a symbol to add to your collection and um, to go on to your badges for your account customization we wound up with 50,000 credits and a thousand free xp so we'll talk about free xp in a little bit um that's a pretty good haul um what i'm going for most right now because my account's really limited on it is this this credit gain Got a few more containers to open. These are off the current uh, battleships missions. We earned a collection, collectible, which those collections can earn you things like super containers, which are the big containers that give you fantastic prizes. Got some coal and a special resource to buy ships or commanders with, or certain things like um, unique ship modules or flags. And then we got a special camo. So here's again, another way we can get those special camos. Um, this one has 125% boost to XP per battle, 25% commander XP boost, and 100% free XP boost, as well as the detectability and dispersion uh, perks that you get in most camos. 
Okay, let's just open the rest of these and see what we get. The resources crate, so it's giving us coal, free XP, and some flags. We'll speed Charlie London. Each of these flag combinations have again a unique ability. Another camo. This is a collection item. One more of these special crates. Another camo. Got a commander, William Sims. And some commander XP flags. Okay. So flags and camos that you use to accelerate progress on your captains and your ships come from crates. And they also come from these other areas here to the left in your port. So combat missions, we must have gotten a few of those crates off this US battleships um, set of missions. And that's what happened. We got 450,000 hit, point hit points of damage to enemy ships, 8,000 base XP. Um, these other missions you can investigate in your own port. But essentially, we knocked out three more of these missions, completed this first phase, which is called Ready to Roll. Those were the special crates that were in port for us. There's different ones. If you're in a clan, there's missions around clan battles. And there are daily missions as well. So you can get daily missions that yield you, again, special resources to buy ships in what's called the armory um, with these unique currencies. And then, again, ability to get flags, get commander XP, get uh, free XP. Cool stuff. Check out your combat missions tab to get the unique goodies that will speed your progress. And then campaigns. These are always accessible. They live as long as your account lives. Um, the one that's accessible to you early on with low tier ships is called science of victory each of these is a step and inside that step is tasks and you can select these tasks with a non-premium account you can have two active um, and when you acquire or basically achieve these different things you get rewards so right now i have basically successfully completed task six which was earn two heroic achievements i think i got a high caliber in the last game I'd already had one of those, doesn't have to be in the same game. So what did I get for that? I got 10 Zulu flags, which I think is a credit earning flag. And I'll just select a new task that I haven't completed yet. If there's a check mark by it, you've already completed it. If there's no check mark, it's one that you have yet to do. And for each of these tasks, you get a certain number of stars. These stars add up across the top. And then when you've achieved that full ring of or run of stars, you can unlock the final task. Usually a better reward. There's 10 flags each of four different types. And then you can progress to the next stage, which is currently locked. So we're halfway through this Science of Victory campaign. And the final task gives you seven days of premium account, which is pretty cool. All right, a lot of information. But basically, flags and camos can be sourced in a lot of different ways. Um, the campaigns tab, or sorry, the uh, collections tab is accessible under your profile. And that's those other little badges that popped up. And you can see there's usually four or five different sets of collectible items. And when you collect all the items in a set, you get basically camos for that. And if you complete the entire collection, you actually get a free premium ship. <laughs> That's the way I've got a lot of premiums in this game is by completing collections or completing holiday free ship events. There's usually one every holiday year. Um, so that's definitely something we want to take advantage of to try to grab a tier five Oklahoma US premium slow as all get out battleship. All right. We've talked about don't rush up the tiers. Um, take your time. Maybe go to tier five or six in different ship lines um, instead of rushing up to tier 10 in any one given line. Find out if you like destroyer play, battleship play, cruiser play, what's the best for you. Um, move your commanders up. Again, as you rank up each ship in a line, um, move your commanders up the line with it. 
so that your best commander is in your top tier ship. And then lastly, save, uh, well, we'll talk about the next next couple next couple while we're loading in. So our next game, we are going to play a DD. So I'm only to tier three, that's my highest DD. And it's gonna be the Valkyrie. The other Valkyrie is one of the ships in the Halloween campaign. It's a tier 10 cruiser, not the same. <laughs> in the Halloween hunt event. The Valkyrie, why do I have this special camo on it? Well, I'm trying to level up um, as quickly as possible. I need 6,000 uh, experience points to get to the next level DD, which is the Wakeful. So I'm going to use my special camo to accelerate that process a little bit. I've already been able to boost the ship to um, these premium modules here on the deck or the hull and on the fire control which is my main battery range now my next stop is unlocking the wakeful but i need 3500 xp to do that let's take her out let's look at some destroyer play so we've gone from slow the quicker and being food for lots of ships, <laughs> the cruiser life is about. And I love playing cruisers, probably my favorite class. I came back to cruisers after I played battleships quite a lot. Once I got more comfortable in basically reading the mini map and being situationally aware. And then now I'm actually trying to build up my destroyer skills. I have not made it through a whole line tier 10 on World of Warships PC. I have made it to the top tier, which is a condensed seven tier system, Legends, the US destroyer line. But I just wasn't comfortable running destroyers very much in the beginning of my tenure on the PC game. Um, the play moves quickly. I'm a person who likes to give the best I can to my team. So I didn't want to be an anchor, no pun intended, and, and bring down my team's chances of winning by playing really poorly in a deep and it's the situational awareness you build playing battleships helps you get more comfortable in cruisers and destroyers and destroyers being spotted is the thing that you don't want to, to happen I um, you want to use your stealth in many situations as you they have low detectability so they can't be seen from very far away that allows you to get up close to enemy targets and use your torpedo armament you basically stealth torpedo them or ambush them and that takes a different mindset with regard to keep track of multiple targets how far away they are from you um, how far your torpedo range is what the enemy ships bearing is are they turning um, all those things you have to keep in mind while you're playing a destroyer and it just takes more practice in the game to feel comfortable doing that um, Hey, Nico Boost, thank you for the follow, man. I appreciate it very, very much. Um, tonight, we're just basically going over some kind of key things to think about when establishing a new World of Warships PC account. So if you're an experienced player, it's kind of remedial night probably for you. <laughs> you're going to be way beyond where I'm at in this, this particular stream. But just trying to help newer players understand the dynamics of getting comfortable in this game and some key things to think about while you're building up your early account. So we've covered tier progression, um, leveling commanders up, not necessarily a skill tree, but moving your best commander up to your highest tier ship, which is going to be the most competitive environment you're facing, the top tier that you're in. And then um, let's talk about number four. We free XP, we open four or five crates in that last um, port visit. Free XP is that gold XP, and it goes into a special category that you can use on any ship, not just the ship that it's earned on. I don't use my free XP for anything, but basically buying free XP reward ships. And they take a lot of free XP. They're 750,000, usually minimum, sometimes a million now. Um, and that will take a long time to build up if you're not running a premium account or premium ships, but... Uh, it's a huge boost to get some of the better ships in the game that are available with free XP. So, 
We'll talk about that when we exit to port, but that's my, my number one tip on free XP is try to grind your stock ships and and just grind those ships without using the free XP you've accumulated. Don't use your free XP to upgrade your modules. This is not as hard a game to compete in as World of Tanks with stock vehicles. You can use high explosive ammunition to damage just about any ship in the game. Um, whereas in World of Tanks, you can sit and try to pen the front of a heavy tank with a lower tier tank or a stock tank that has a crappy gun on it and is the worst experience ever, which is probably why I don't play World of Tanks very much, if at all anymore, usually just around the holidays. Um, in this game, you kind of feel like you can always do damage to the enemy. So we are like we're the only human again because it's a low tier battle. And I'm just starting out my destroyers. So I'm gonna try to run at an angle where again where I can see broadsides. I'm gonna use our HE ammunition against destroyers. We talk about ammo types. If you use armor piercing rounds on destroyers, those rounds tend to just go straight through the destroyer's hull and not do very much damage, or they will not damage modules. There are torpedo tubes and engines and steering gear and all that stuff. We want to choose using high explosive ammunition against destroyers whenever possible. thing to switch in a destroyer or a bat or a cruiser you can switch your ammo type a lot faster there is a skill that helps you do that called expert loader almost hit my own ship there go here they do not hit your teammates warning message sometimes with these bots you have to thread the needle they all congregate together again they're kind of programmed not to ram one another immediately but they do this hilarious just like gonna basically do see -si do and dance together and stay in close proximity without really touching each other. Continue using my guns. If I use my torpedoes here, I have a good chance of damaging my friendly ships and it only take a torpedo or two to sink them. So I'm choosing to just go to guns right now. Sunk. I think we timed Team that right as the guy got rammed. Okay, we're gonna risk. We're gonna risk running some torpedoes here. I'm gonna try to get to the side. I wanna torpedo a ship from the side, not from the bow. That way he doesn't have the ability to evade very easily. destroyers have this cool feature which are called single fire torpedoes. Basically each push of your mouse button is going to release one single torpedo instead of a salvo of torpedoes. So you can get these hilarious five, six, seven torpedo salvo hits sometimes. I'm being cavalier because this guy is totally distracted. reload our torpedoes that should take care of them. Okay. Enemy battleship sunk. Next please. Our victory is in sight. It will take me forever to kill one of these battleships with my HE ammunition. You see it's not gonna do a lot of damage. What we're hoping for is to set fire. So, got a fire there. But he immediately put it out. And bots will do that. They'll put the fires out really quickly. A good human player will let that first fire burn. They'll just use their repair party. And they'll only put the fires out when there's a second fire lit, typically. That has to do with just managing kind of the overall damage that you take. Copy. You're 
not gonna get away with playing this close to chips and a destroyer against humans. They want to kill destroyers like they should. I haven't even looked setting the second fire. Let's see if we can chase him with some torpedoes. We've gotten another fire set. That fire would have burned until, burned until his damage control resets or until the fire burns out. Let's see. This cruiser may have already used his damage control, so that fire is continuing to burn. You'll see your damage counter keep ticking up when you have a fire that sticks. They say a fire that sticks and keeps burning. Our smoke for fun. Smoke up, keep us concealed. Now the enemy ships can't spot us. Smoke screen set. Destroyer, you can be really close to an enemy ship in your smoke and not be detected. If you're in a battleship or a cruiser, you have bigger guns so that smoke doesn't conceal you as well. Enemy cruiser sunk. Nico again, Nico or Nicho, thank you so much for the follow. Really, really appreciate it. Um, drop a note in chat if you have any questions or comments. I'm working hard to improve this stream. I'm a new streamer and actually still just getting used to all my gadgets. So I make stupid mistakes. <laughs> Usually once a stream, press the wrong button on my stream deck. But anyway, I'm really, really appreciate you um, coming by and following tonight. It means a lot to me. All right, finish first. So again, it's not gonna be hard to finish first when you're an experienced player against bots. And um, when you're a new player, there's so much going on and to keep track of, um, it can be harder to do as well, but you'll pick up quickly kind of how the bots are patterned, when they're gonna shoot at you, when they're not. Um, approach from the side where the distracted target is looking the other way, for instance, is a good strategy. And um, that's what I did mainly in this battle. So why I want to do well, why it matters to get like a high caliber and get a high damage total all comes down to this number. We want to get as much credits and XP as possible. So even on this tier three ship, it was an 85,000 credit game, even without premium. And I'm not running premium because this is my third account. <laughs> um, I will show you that I did splurge and buy a premium ship and it was actually a really good deal so that's my justification i don't tell my wife how much i've spent on world of warships but um, we would earn a lot faster with premium so if you have the funds to do it and you've only got one account that you're just starting up um, use your premium days we'll talk about that um, shortly but here's our reward so not just credits of eighty five thousand, but we got 2560 ship xp and we got 128 free XP, again, that we can use on any ship or to purchase a free XP ship. You're going to see those on the tech tree, generally. I think now you might also see them in the armory as well. Um, but there are going to be these ships here that have a star next to them. This is a free XP ship. The Nelson I have on two of my accounts. She's a really fun battleship. She's not an insane amount of free XP, 375,000. You will get to faster than you think. I'm only at 115 battles. Um, I ha have not had premium on this other than the free premium that comes when you complete kind of your first account steps. And I've got 50,000 free XP already on this account. So um, the Nelson is a really fun battleship. Uh, HE blasting, fire setting, fire barge she looks like a barge um she's a fun ship um let's see there's usually a couple others these are the more expensive ones azuma hayate a million or two million free xp um alaska is a million free xp but those are the ships that i'm saving my free xp for on any account that i run another one here friesland and small and these are two really popular DDs. It, it, this guy especially is supposed to be really 
really strong DD. 2 million XP is going to take you a long time to accumulate, but again, if you're running premium time and premium ships when you get to higher tiers, um, using flags that give you extra free XP, you'll see that you'll get to these numbers faster than you think. So that was our fourth point. Save your free XP for reward ships um, rather than buying ship upgrades or buying, um, well, skipping ships outright with your free XP. You'll hear, oh, this ship is a dog. I just use my free XP to skip past it. I recommend not doing that. You can help it. Let's just jump back to that highlight slide really quick because we're going to talk about our fifth point. And then we're going to go into battle with one of my higher tier ships. So we just talked about saving free XP. And then lastly, plan for premium time rewards. So premium time is going to basically be use it or lose it. So you could see in the Science of Victory mission um, that once I get to the end, I get seven days of premium. I get a full week of premium. Don't complete that mission the day before you go on vacation for a week, because once you start that seven day clock, you can't pause it. It's like basically a magazine subscription. That magazine's gonna come 12 times once a month, every month, whether you're home or not to receive your mail. Premium time has to be used when it's activated. So if you get a one day reward that you see in a mission set, or you get a seven day reward in something like a campaign, don't activate that last step of the campaign until you know for sure that you can use your free days when you activate them. So basically plan for your premium time rewards. Um, I'm not running premium time on this account, but I can say it's a really good investment if you enjoy the game. And we're coming up on holiday time, usually between Black Friday and Christmas, they will run a year's worth of premium time for half off, um, 50 bucks generally. Sometimes it's not as good as a half off deal, but for me to spend even 75, $80 on a year's worth of premium, if I divided the number of hours that I play into that 75 or $80, it would literally be pennies over the whole year. So it's been one of the things that's really increased my enjoyment. It's like, it's one round of golf or less, less than a round of golf to buy a year of premium during the holidays. I'd highly recommend doing that if you're going to play the game a lot. Um, enjoy the game and enjoy the fast that you can progress faster with premium time. It's not pay to win, but it is pay to progress. You will progress faster if you have premium time on your account. Okay, so when and how did I splurge? Well, yesterday I got a coupon and these guys are devious at WG. It is a business, right? They're trying to make money. And I applaud them for doing so, for business owners myself. Um, so I got a coupon that said, if you spend any amount of money in the premium shop, you would get double that amount that you spent in dollars back into balloons. So what did that mean? Well, basically Scharnhorst which is a ship that I love and I have on one of my US accounts, my North America accounts, um, is a $40 ship. So if I spent $40 on Scharnhorst, I'd get $80 worth of doubloons back. And I couldn't pass up on that. Um, so what you see is I got Scharnhorst in my port. We'll play her next. This is the first premium I bought in the entire game uh, four years ago, Thanksgiving. I bought the Sharn horse. I was terrible at her, <laughs> but she's an awesome ship. It was not her fault. It was me. And you can see now I have 20,000 doubloons in my port. So what does that mean? Well, I can go back to the premium shop now and for basically far less than 20,000 doubloons, I can buy a tier eight premium ship or lower. And again, if you're in a new account, I don't recommend going and buying a high tier ship that you would be completely over your skis with. Um, but again, you can see here, I spent, um, where is she? Where are you, Sharn? Oh, I know she's in here. She's probably not showing in here because I've already purchased her, but she was the same cost as the Florida, um, about $37, $38. So I bought her, wound up getting 20000 the balloons back and if I go in the armory 
and I look at ships that you can buy for in-game currency. I was shocked because I haven't bought a ship with doubloons for a while that even the tier 8 ships are only about 13,000 doubloons. So I can buy my pick of tier 8 uh, ships with doubloons and I will probably wind up buying Massachusetts because I know she's an awesome ship. I don't own her on any of my accounts. So I'll basically be getting my ship that I bought for $40. I'll get another tier 8 basically for free. And I'll still have 7,000 doubloons left over to buy port slots or other goodies, maybe a little extra premium time at some point when I want to boost my progress on this account from time to time. So if you get that 200% doubloons back coupon, it's something that would be worth splurging on. Even if you bought doubloons for dollars, I think you'd get money back and then you could buy a premium ship or two with it. I'd suggest maybe sticking tier five to tier seven. You buy that tier eight, put it in your port, and don't play it for a while. All right. So let's take a higher tier ship out, tier seven. I've got Sharnhorst in York. Um, I am cash poor, so you can see I've been trying to buy my upgrades, and upgrades are basically special enhancements to your ships. Um, you can start adding those at tier two. And in the case of Sharnhorst, I have four slots. This is a little mod. Um, Available in the World of Warships mod station. It's called Enhanced Port View, I believe. So you can see all this stuff without clicking into the ship. In real life, we'd have to click into the ship and look here at equipment. So my upgrades, modifications, basically for Sharnhorst, I've boosted the main armaments durability effectively so that they're harder to take out and damage. Um, I've boosted her ability to control fire and flood. I just bought earlier tonight an aiming systems modification, an upgrade to increase her accuracy. And then my last one I'm going to buy that costs more money than I have currently <clears throat> is either damage control system mod 2 to make her even more impervious to fire and flood or to um, give her better steering gears to make her more turny and I will probably go for the, the steering gears modification, even though she's a battleship. Because what you're going to see is we've played battleships, we've played cruisers, we've played destroyers. Sharnhorst is really a hybrid in my mind. She's more like a battle cruiser. She's not one pure ship class. Let's load in and we'll talk about her a little bit. Okay. There's a battleship's level of hit points. She has guns that are kind of like a high, a higher grade cruiser gun, a heavy cruiser gun. So what you're gonna see is that she cannot give the big punishing broadside blows that battleships that have battleship caliber guns can deliver. But the trade-off is she reloads about every 20 seconds versus every 30 seconds. So her damage output is still good and where that difference comes in is against cruisers. So she can't take out a battleship immediately with her smaller caliber guns, but she can lay waste to cruisers and whittle them down very quickly um, with that 20 second reload. The other thing she can do is defend herself better against destroyers because that reload is more frequent and you can switch ammo types between armor piercing that you're going to use namely against cruisers, namely against battleships most of the time. Switch to HE when you need to to confront destroyers that are attacking you. Again, HE is going to do more damage more quickly than destroyers. And then her ace up her sleeve is her torpedoes. She can launch three torpedoes on each side of her bow and she can launch them at an angle that you can basically get those torpedoes off while you're attacking enemy ships. I'm steering mostly towards them. You have to angle out somewhat to, to fire your torpedoes, but she has good torpedo angles. See how far forward you can Action fire your stations. torpedoes. You don't have to turn all the way sideways to launch them. So she's basically what I call a Swiss Army knife ship, even though she's German. She has a lot of offensive tools and then she does have access to uh, the, the normal repair modules that other ships have, the damage control party, which is under my Arky. 
and the repair party, which builds your hit points back, and um, under the T key, and then she has access to a float fighter or a float spotter, a catapult spotter, a catapult fighter. That catapult spotter will increase your main battery firing rate. German ships don't have the best accuracy. That's why I put the accuracy module as an upgrade on her. So I get to play this ship in a way that rewards both classes I like to play the most, which is battleships and cruisers. She plays a little bit like each. And dish punishment out and be aggressive close range towards the end of a match going into the middle right now versus tier 8 and tier 9 ships would be a little silly but later in the match when she's going against lower health tier 8s tier 9s totally legit to go in close use your torpedoes get into knife fights and play aggressive he also has 5.8 kilometer secondaries. He's a captain that needs a lot of upgrading. When my captain gets stronger, this range will extend out. Secondary batteries fire automatically, unless you have a skill called manual control of secondaries, where you have to basically control click an enemy ship, and that will target your secondaries to shoot that specific ship. I'm gonna stick with HE a little bit here. Because I'm firing at battleships from a long distance. Her lower caliber armor piercing rounds are not gonna do a lot to these tier 8 battleships from long range. Early on, against heavily armored targets, I will shoot HE. Try to light some people on fire. And as they get closer, and I have broadside, I will switch to armor piercing. I can pre-select the next armor type by single clicking on that number. If I want to change to it immediately, I would double click that number. I'm going to single click. Now I am actually going to switch to AP because I'm getting some cruisers near me. Emperor, hopefully. Get them broadside. The odds are they'll turn away. Not turning away. Not yet, anyway. Dang her. That'll make her turn away. <laughs> 11,000 damage on the Edinburgh. Okay. Where it gets too hot in the hot tub, I need to turn away. People just start playing the game and get into these higher tiers will quickly learn that just because you're in a battleship doesn't mean you can charge into caps and survive. Fire. Especially in this game, I'm the low tier, tier 7 in a tier 9 game. Two tier spread. The higher tiers in World of Warships PC, so. In single fire, I'm just going to use my repair party, not my damage control. I'm going to save it. Not, Ember, not acting very smart. Catching, sleeping, trying to smoke up. Oh, just need one more hit. Hit him. Awesome, got a citadel. We've destroyed an enemy cruiser. Okay, we got a tier seven cruiser. Again, the ship is nails against cruisers. You'll see I'm just gonna do chip damage against this Roma. You won't see, generally, 11,000 hit point broadsides against the Roma. Has better armor by far. Say <laughs> 5,570, not bad. Not bad against the Roma. 
still broadside to me, so I'm going to take one more shot at her, then I'm going to start looking at the Alsace. It's Alsace is targeting the Colorado, and he's broadside to me as well, and much closer range, so I could do a little more damage armor piercing here, but these torpedoes may take him out. Ah, don't even get a chance to shoot at him. I'm gonna target the upper half of these battleships with this Sharnhorst AP. Something called the armor belt on a battleship, and it is the thicker armor that goes basically kind of just at the waterline up to almost up to the top of the where the deck is. Upper deck. I'm not gonna penetrate that, especially from distance on this Roma, so I'm actually gonna try to get my shots to land up on her superstructure. Where the conning tower is and gun placements that far. I'll do a lot more damage up there. Plays by some of these enemy ships. 7,600. Take one more shot. It's hard to not take shots at this Bromo stack. But I need to target this Gutland soon. Switch to the. Uh, they, appear. they start firing again to be able to see them. Switching to HE to defend myself against that destroyer. This distance, it might do us well to get Roma on fire if we can. Fortunately, our team is not. We're just squishier, so reload, armor piercing. Gotta go the bridge. I'm gonna try to set us on fire with HE. We're gonna do the same. We were successful. Oh, there's the Yutland. Yutland, Jutland. PD Central. We're hold below the water line. We're flooding quickly. We're getting focus fire. Problem solved, sir. Don't want to necessarily go broadside to this Alaska. Very good AP rounds. Basically getting chased. Our support has died. Away from that AP. some hopeful torpedoes. He knows I'm distracted, so he's just been teeing off on me. Get a little bit of revenge here. there. Unfortunately, we're going to have to change course. Don't want to hit these islands. Can't necessarily charge him because he does have pretty good torpedoes. 
What we've done by shooting him is make him go dark. Realizes we can shoot back and we're not being distracted by everybody else. Took a little break. Flooding, so we have to use damage control and repair party. And we're now broadside to these guys. We're in bad shape. This is probably going to be RIP. Rip it. Problem solved, sir. And the Utland is back. Doing this from his smoke. Get behind this island, this cover. And I'm angling away, so I'm using a cruiser tactic now to angle away from these two ships here, the Alaska and the King George. I'd like to catch the Alaska sleeping. It has good armor, but it's still cruiser armor, so it's not good as a battleship. Damage it pretty well. Two battle a battleship and a tier nine cruiser here. Could be wasting this King George and not doing a whole lot. Pointing. So, that's kind of life as a low tier battleship or cruiser. You're outgunned, and when you're on a flank that melts, you wind up playing an active defense like I was doing. The uh, Gutland's a tier 9 destroyer. Two tiers higher. We're also being targeted by the Alaska. And that's a tier 9 free XP cruiser. That's a 1,000 free XP, but she's a very good ship. Probably the best um, free XP ship available, in my opinion. We're taking fire from the King George. <laughs> so anyway, we did 60,000 damage. Not horrible, especially given that I still don't have the captain upgraded on this ship at all. Very low tier. Put you also at a big disadvantage. Generally, if I had worked up the German line and not just bought the premium, I'd have probably a captain with at least 10 points, which a 10 point captain is kind of the minimum to succeed to the best of your ability, basically. You can do well with a lower point captain, but a 10 point captain is really beneficial. All right, so this looks like it's gonna be close, but a loss. Exit out to port. All right, and I think that's going to be it for the playing portion of the stream tonight, guys. I'm just going to go back and, and recap really quickly, run through some of these fast because we covered them in detail. Um, your five keys to starting a successful account on PC and World of Warships. Don't rush up the tiers. Play the different ship types. Play the different nations up to tier five, tier six, tier seven. Don't rush to tier 10. Don't be that guy hard not to do that when there's so much emphasis put on those big big gunships in the game but it, it won't be fun for you I promise you that um move your commanders up as you buy ships higher and higher up the tiers in a given line put your best commander in your top tier ship and backfill the ships with new commanders um, if you want to keep those lower tier ships in your port you get 15 port slots kind of 15 port slots in a dream so 
You either need to buy some gold at some point to get additional port slots if you're going to keep ships, or you need to sell the ships, as I've done. I've sold most of my lower tier ships as I've progressed up the line, except for the German cruiser line. I love Konigsberg, so I've kept her. Um, and I like Nuremberg a lot, so I've kept her along with being at the York at this point. Um, use your flags and camos. You can get flags and camos um, from combat missions. You can get them from campaigns. Get them from collections. You can get them from your daily crates So and super containers. So use the special ones that give you XP gains and uh, uh, currency gains in silver and credits. Use those on ships that are generally higher tier ships that you're working to get out of a stock state, get them leveled up quicker, get out of the stock modules, um, buy the better modules, and then take the fancy flags off and just use the base camos um, that you get for free in crates to get the rest of the XP to the next level. Um, but use your flags and camos, that will accelerate your progress quite a bit. Um, save your free XP for reward ships if you can. I blew all my free XP on ship modules and not skipping any ships, but just on modules when I started my first couple accounts and I regret that. So now I save it, scrounge it, and I get some really awesome free XP ships. I have Alaska on one of my accounts. I have several other free XP ships, including Musashi. Um, I have uh, Missouri, which is sought after by everyone these days. You can only get it in a holiday crate, a very low drop rate. But she makes incredible amounts of silver and XP. So those were free XP ships because I saved my saved my money. Save my, sh my free XP money for those reward ships. Plan your premium time rewards. If you're going to get premium time for completing a campaign or for completing a mission string, it's only activate that last step of that mission string or, or campaign when you're going to be able to use your premium time. Don't use it right before you go away for the weekend. If it's a two-day premium time or three-day premium time reward, seven-day reward, don't use it before you go on vacation. Um, it's use it or lose it. And consider buying premium time. It's a good investment along with maybe a, a, fr a premium ship or two. Again, that coupon I got was too good to pass up that gave back 200% of my premium ship purchase into Bloom. So now I can go buy a tier eight as well and have a bunch of gold left over, 7,000 doubloons left over. Um, my bonus tip, make sure to reference helpful resources. Like the World of Warships Wiki is a fantastic page. I go there probably at least once a day to look at commander skill setups or the modules suggested to purchase um, for your premium and your regular ships. So World of Warships Wiki is great. The Wargaming forums can get salty, but they have a lot of good information there. There's also Discord servers now for World of Warships Legends and World of Warships PC. And there's a ton of video content on Twitch, um, live streaming like tonight or on video on demand and YouTube. So again, look for Notzer, look for iChase, um, look for Lord Zath, folks that have been around playing this game for longer than I have that technically know every specific detail about every ship. Um, search out those those best um, content contributors and community contributors and you'll have a lot of advice on the more technical aspects of the game that we didn't cover tonight. So we'll see, there may be more to this new player series than just this basic overview. Um, but again, my, my goal, as I said at the beginning, is to help new players get better at this game faster, understand it faster. We have more and more people playing this really, really fun game that uses your brain more than it uses your reflexes, especially for older dudes like me. Um, it's been a great journey over the last four years playing this. and. The two years before that in Tanks um, were also very fun too. I just enjoy this game more than Tanks. I don't like the futility of aiming at a, a tank that I can't do damage to for 15 minutes. Not my idea of fun. But this game really has the best qualities of all the WG games for gaming, in my opinion. So thank you so much. I'm Van Kraken signing off. I um, really appreciate you following along tonight and look to see you soon in World of Warships PC or on World of Warships Legends. Have a great one.